anything is possible in the DC universe. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? Who's to say? Superman and the country of the United States of America are the same thing. Not really, but Superman is like a mascot for American culture. His catchphrase was literally truth, justice, and the American way. Country boy, upstanding journalist, American icon. Q gasps when he renounced his American citizenship in 2011's Action Comics 900. The reason he did it was because he didn't want to be tied to the US anymore, but not for the reason you might think. So what happened is he flew to show support for a protest in another country. He was showing his support, Superman support, but the government of that country thought he was acting on behalf of America and took his presence as a declaration of war, which was not Superman's intention at all. So he wanted to separate from his American status so he could stand up for what he believes in without causing an international incident. The good news for those that disliked this change, it didn't last long. The new 52 reboot happened the same year, that's a whole other can of worms, and it made Superman an American again. Batman The Dark Knight is an incredible movie, a cold take, I know. The scene where James Gordon was revealed to actually be alive, I think I lurched out of my seat when I first watched it. Gordon saves the mayor's life at the cost of his own, but then after the epic car chase, ending with Joker standing over the beaten body of Batman, suddenly the Joker is pushed aside and it's surprise, James, he's alive. That's cinema, that's art, and that is Oscar worthy. Also, there is a photo that is, I'm pretty sure from when they filmed this scene of Heath Ledger's Joker skateboard flipping over Christian Bale's Batman, and it should be in the Louvre. Maybe the greatest underdog comeback story I have ever heard, ever read, Kite Man. This villain started out as a random joke character in the lore of Batman and has worked his way up to being a fan favorite that is now getting his own animated series that's inspirational. The character appeared in Harley Quinn, the animated series, and that's when his popularity really kicked off. Now his own show is set to premiere this year. He really is a character you have to love, goofball through and through. If you didn't catch it from his name, he fights with kite themed items, and of course he flies around using a kite. I love the villains that pick something and stick to it like their life depends on it. The lore of Kite Man's life, or Charles Brown's life, is also just really interesting in the comics. The guy designed the Joker mobile for crying out loud. There was this moment when the Riddler and the Joker were fighting over the right to kill Batman, so civilized. Batman contacted Brown to act as his eyes and ears in the villain feud because Brown already had a connection to the Joker since he designed his car. Brown agreed to help out the Bat, but unfortunately, the Riddler found out about it and proceeded to respond in quite possibly the most unhinged manner possible, creating one of the funniest villains in the process. Brown's son went out to fly his kite, and that was the last thing he would ever do. He did not know the Riddler poisoned the kite's string. This tragedy with the kite created Kite Man, but Kite Man blamed Batman for getting him into the mess and became a villain for real. The Harley Quinn show gave us so much, not just Kite Man's popularity, but also the engagement of quite the pair of villains, Clock King and the Riddler. The writers were just out here doing whatever they wanted, and I love that for them. In the Harley Quinn TV show episode, Harley Quinn, a very problematic Valentine's Day special, we see the proposal, it's very romantic, a heart up in the night sky, and the billboards in the main city square are filled with question marks, and Clock King, will you marry me? Perfect, no notes, I love it when people have fun. It's hard to believe, but Wonder Woman once lost her title. The 90s were the era of experimentation. No one, no matter how loved or established you were, was safe. The 90s robbed Wonder Woman of the name Wonder Woman. She was replaced by Artemis, an Amazon warrior. Though she lost her name, they could not take her spirit, and she continued fighting crime. Now the second half of this, she got a new outfit for fighting crime, and lots of people hated it, including some DC artists. The main critique of it was that it was just too far off from her usual iconic look. She was basically unrecognizable. She looks great, but not like the Diana everyone knows. Thankfully, by the end of the storyline that featured biker Diana, she was back as Wonder Woman. People hated it that much. Moving into a different animated universe and villainification of James Corden, the beloved police chief. Batman Gotham by Gaslight was an animated movie released by Warner Bros. It was for adults as it handled some adult themes. Jack the Ripper targeted a very specific type of person. So in the world of this movie, Gotham exists when the actual Jack the Ripper did the Victorian era. Batman in this world is trying to figure out the identity of Jack the Ripper along with the police chief James Gordon. Imagine my shock and surprise to learn that Jack was James the whole time. Turns out James's time in the Civil War messed with him mentally and he claimed his work was holy, thou shalt not kill does not exist here I guess. James claimed that he was just clearing the world of filth 
in his words. He gets cleared by Batman in a collapsed Ferris wheel. Wild, but fun story. I wouldn't have ever thought to make Police Chief James Gordon a notorious London criminal, but it served. Character deaths can be pretty unexpected, depending on the person. But no death made my jaw drop quite the way Snowflame's third one did. Not his first or his second, his third. I mean, th the entire character is wild. He is literally a villain that gets his power from a super substance that shares the same name with Coca-Cola. What is that? Who comes up with that? Anyway, the villain is featured as a main antagonist antagonist in Peacemaker Tries Hard 4. That series is known to be a little silly, and yet I still never would have guessed how Snowflame was going to be defeated. So Snowflame captures Peacemaker and also Red B. He's got them tied up, but they escape. Snowflame heads to a table with a mountain of the snow to recharge himself for battle. Things aren't looking good for the hero. Snowflame is seriously powerful, but the next time Snowflame goes to recharge is where the tide turns in the wildest of ways. Instead of getting snow in his nose, he gets an entire poison dart frog. Literally, what is happening? Never ever ever would I have guessed how that fight was going to end. Goodbye Snowflame, you will not be missed. Alfred, Batman's trusted butler and Loki father figure, his villain arc had me on the edge of my seat. This man deserves nothing but good. Imagine having to corral Bruce Wayne and you get repaid by getting smashed by a boulder. Leave the man alone. The boulder was the start of his villain arc. Alfred literally did not choose the villain life, the villain life chose him. After getting hit by a boulder, he was kidnapped and if that wasn't bad enough, the people that kidnapped him experimented on his body and then brought him back to life like he was Frankenstein's monster and all that monster wanted to do was off his family. Poor Alfred, I could not imagine a worse fate. The reason he hates his family, Batman and Robin, so much is because the experiment on his brain essentially reversed everything. So all the love was transformed into hate and he became the outsider. Thankfully, Batman loves Alfred and is a rich genius so he funded the research to get Alfred cured. He got 50% cured, the outsider still lives inside him, but rarely emerges. He does, but rarely. Still, the sweet butler becoming a Batman hating villain was never on my bingo card. I know we don't like remembering Superman blue and red, but we must. This storyline was controversial among fans, most hated it, and that is so fair. Superman is one DC character that has been around forever, so most people know what's up with the Man of Steel. Worlds were rocked with the 1998 version of Superman red and Superman blue. Superman temporarily lost his regular powers and developed energy based powers and then to top it all off he split into two different supers. Blue was the more like intellectual of the pair and red was more act now, waste time thinking later. The two supers did not see eye to eye and at a certain point flat out refused to join back into one person. Unfortunately for the characters that was the only thing fans wanted and soon they were pushed back together into one hero. The reason given in the comic was that Superman was able to return to normal when the electromagnetic energy dispersed. Batman is strong and powerful and rich, but that doesn't change the fact that he's just a guy with a regular skeleton, a regular spine that can be broken. Batman did have his back literally snapped by Bane. It was awful. Batman, even though he was just a regular human and got hurt plenty of times, he always seemed so powerful, like he could bounce back from anything. So breaking his back was a moment that became very iconic after it happened. The Nightfall arc of the early 1990s featured Bane truly trying his hardest to destroy Batman in every aspect he could. There was a major battle between Bane and Batman that left Batman worse for wear until it ended with Bane grabbing Batman and causing that serious act of harm and then to top it off he tossed the bat from the rooftop but he couldn't fly so it ended bad. Batman had no choice but to get out of the game for a while and have someone take up his mantle. That person was Jean Paul Valley. Valley did good at first but he was known for being violent and soon started breaking Batman's no ending life rule and that damaged Batman's reputation with James Gordon, the police, the public. It was a mess. Thankfully, Bruce is able to get back on his feet and heal up to defeat Valley and the actual good Batman is back and better than ever, but this was probably the toughest era for Bruce Wayne. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and make your mark on the comments section down below. This is Juliana, signing off. Bye!